Hi, I'm Simon Eldridge. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about leveraging AI technologies in a media supply chain in order to optimize the content creation process. Um, AI is an interesting topic right now. Everybody's talking about it, and there's varying different use cases from automating the actual creation of content to mining archives you know, to, to find the content that you have. Today I'm going to speak about a specific example of how we use you, uh, AI technologies to really fine-tune the process of creating content for distribution internationally. Uh, before I do that, just a quick brief, uh, who are we? Um, so SDVI Corporation, we were founded in 2013. Uh, we're a distributed company, but headquartered in Silicon Valley. We've got uh, people across the country, uh, and actually in three different countries. Uh, we also have three pretty large media customers on our board. Um, simply because they feel that the work that we're doing is important enough to this industry that they want to make sure that, that, that we're doing the right thing. So in the context of, of the AI piece, let me just describe briefly what we do from a media supply chain perspective. Uh, what we're really doing is we're bringing manufacturing paradigms to the media industry. So if, if you ignore the creative side of media production and you think of the distribution side of media production, it's essentially a factory. Right? And they're receiving raw materials into the factory, they're turning that into products, and then they're shipping those products out to various different distribution systems. So what we do in that, in that paradigm is we provision compute storage networking and the specialized applications that are required for processing media. So think transcoders or QC tools or captioning products. Um, we deploy them wherever you happen to need them. So whether that's in a public cloud or a private cloud or some hybrid. And the ultimate goal as is uh, always the goal with, with supply chain thinking, is to drive efficiency, to maximize utilization, uh, to increase agility, um, and ultimately, time to revenue. Right? How quickly can you react to market needs to be able to get your product out there? So all, all of this really relates back to that manufacturing paradigm. So just briefly, just to give you context of, of the, where the AI thing fits in, uh, this is our product suite. The SDV Rally is essentially the factory. right? So this is where you create your business rules to say, here's what I'm expecting to come in, here's what I want to do to it, and here are the deliverables that I want to go out the other end. Um, so that's really for factory operators, right? They're, they're managing the exceptions as the content is it automatically flows through the facility. Rally Access, which is where I'll spend most of my time today, is, is designed to allow operators to interact with that manufacturing process, right? So if you're an operator, there are some things that can't be automated, right? So manual QC, as an example, you can't always automate the manual QC process, so you need a mechanism to efficiently allow that operator to interact with the content as it goes through the supply chain. Uh, Rally Gateway is an application that really allows you to, it's designed for putting stuff into the factory and getting stuff out of the factory. So if you're a big media network, you don't necessarily produce the content directly, but the people who do produce the content need a mechanism for delivering it to you and need a mechanism to know that, yes, it's been accepted, and you're now going to receive payment for the production of that material. So that's, that's what Gateway is. And then the final piece is Rally Insight. And Rally Insight is designed to leverage the data and the analytics gathered by that platform to make recommendations for how you can further optimize your factory automation process. Right? So that's, that's kind of where we go. And the last one, in terms of the actual processes that we're operating on, um, we're not building transcoders and QC tools and, and the, the, those things. We're, we're basically leveraging the best of breed tools. So we've got various different categories, and the one that I'm obviously going to focus on today is the artificial intelligence tools that we've built directly into the platform. So let's talk about what the challenge was. Um, we were working with Discovery, and their challenge to us was to reduce the time taken to prepare content for distribution optimizing that content compliance process. So if you take someone like Discovery, they operate 400 networks across over 200 different countries. So they're producing a lot of content, right? And every single one of those pieces of content has differences every time it goes to a different location. It may be cut differently. There may be compliance issues or legal issues or social things that you can't show in some territories. And that was really hard, especially with the amount of content that they're producing. So they were really looking for a way to optimize the amount of work that humans have to do as they, as they put content through that factory. So we sat down and we hatched a plan as to how we were going to address this. 
Um, the first one was create a proxy of the video, right? So moving big master videos around doesn't make sense. Uh, if you can get what you need from a lower resolution version of the video, then you should do that. The next thing is then analyzing the content in that proxy using AI services. Um, we were then automatically QC the content using content QC tools. So this is looking for technical compliance as opposed to legal compliance. So it's looking for things like, you know, are there too many black frames or is the audio out of range? You know, those, those kind of technical things that you can pick up on. And then we would gather all of that QC data and all of that AI data and somehow make it available to operators so that they can make decisions on the content in a guided way rather than in a, I'm going to play this content all the way through. And then finally, once they've made those decisions, conform those decisions back to the high-res media, and you've got a new version that you've just created. So how do we do that? So Rally would basically create a proxy of the video. Um, the high-resolution video was already in the cloud anyway. Um, but as I said before, um, moving high-resolution video around is an expensive task, and one of the things of, of cloud-based supply chains is try to avoid egress at all costs because egress is, is money. Um, the second part of this is that the AI services may not be in the same cloud that the content is. So if you create a low-resolution proxy, then you can put the proxy wherever the, the AI service is, run the analysis, throw the proxy away, and get the data back. So we create the proxy. And then we would run the AI analysis of, against that content. Um, it was actually a selection of various different AI tools that we were using. Um, some were doing object recognition. Some were doing nudity detection. Some were doing uh, bad language detection. Anything that you think would be required for making content legally compliant in a particular territory. Right? So you could, you could run all of that analysis, get back an enormous amount of data, and then filter that data based on what you were interested in, based on where you were trying to ship that product to. Uh, you add to that the QC data. So previously they were running that you would have a QC operator and then you would have a compliance operator. They were two different people. Well, if you've now got a guided scenario, then you don't necessarily need two different people. So you get the AI data and the QC data and, and put that all together and normalize it and call it time-based metadata. They're essentially time-based events, right? at this point in time in the video, this happened. Or at this time range in the video, this happened. And then the last complicated part was how do you make all of that information available to an operator in a usable, sensible way, right? So having done the analysis, that's interesting, but what am I going to do? Look at a, a JSON blob that I just got back from an AI service and then watch the video? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so what we've actually done is we've built a panel for Adobe Premiere that will take um, work orders from the rally system. So as an operator, you get a work order list that says, right, this is the next clip that's, that's the most high priority thing that I need to process. You load that into the work order list, you make your decisions, and then you push it back into the platform. And then once it gets back into the platform, that's when you then take those decisions about, you know, this bit was okay, this bit was not okay, create the new version and conform that in the cloud. Okay? In terms of what that looks like, um, this is Adobe Premiere. Well, it's a screenshot of Adobe Premiere. Uh, everything to the left-hand side of, of the line is standard Adobe Premiere. Everything to the right-hand side of the line is basically the, the Rally Adobe panel. Uh, the first thing that an operator sees when they log into the system is a work order list. And this work order list is driven by uh, job priority. Right? So first of all, if something passed through the automated QC without any issues, maybe it never shows up in this job list and it just ships straight out the door. If they've got no compliance work to do, it never shows up in this list. In terms of the jobs that do show up on this list, these are the ones that have been highlighted that somebody needs to pay some attention to it. Now previously, they would have loaded that clip and they, they would have spent at least the duration of that, of that video file reviewing it and making sure that they were catching these issues. They're also ordered based on priority, so the highest priority deliverable, you know, the, the, the nearest deadline is at the top, and they can literally just take these jobs and load them directly into Premiere. Now, when they do that, uh, the right-hand panel obviously changes because you're now not interested in work orders. You're now in a work order, right? You've now got a job to do. So on the right-hand side, uh, you have a collection of all of your time-based metadata events that were picked up from any of the AI services and any of the QC services, but these are filtered based on the job type that you're trying to do. So if you're, going, if you're producing content for Singapore, 
The technical compliance stuff is obviously important because you want to make sure that the content is, is legally valid. But from a social perspective, there's things like you can't show somebody smoking in Singapore. So the, if the AI services picked up peop where people were smoking, it's going to show you exactly in that piece of content where that is, and an operator can simply say, nope, remove that, remove that section. So let's look through the panel. Uh, the panel, you actually get to choose how this data is organized. Um, so in this case, you've got um, AI data, you've got object recognition, you've got facial recognition, you've got a full transcription of the video. Now that also means you can search for words that were said in the video, which is very useful. And you get to toggle on and off each of those items as you go through the clip. As you toggle them on and off, they show up on the left-hand side as clips. So you have an in point and an out point, and you can literally just say, no, I want to remove that clip, or I'm going to approve that clip. And so as you, as you progress from left to right through that clip, you're basically building a new version of what should be in and what should not. And you also have each of those clips show up as markers on the timeline. So using the standard navigation tools of the timeline, you can, you can jump straight from this event to this event to this event. So in terms of how you use it operationally, it's, it's kind of up to you. Uh, you can either do two passes and say, well, I'm going to do a QC pass first, and then I'm going to do a compliance pass. Or you can just show me the worst three events in any particular category. And if, for example, you've got you know, audio dropout that's so bad that there's no point spending any further time on this clip, you can do that first and immediately reject it and push it back into the factory. Okay. Um, so we've packaged that capability up into a, an, an Adobe Premiere panel. And you can leverage whichever AI services you use. Right now, we're, we're working with all the major cloud providers on their, their AI services. Um, I think the key point here is you can get a lot of data about the content using AI services. I think the key is how you use it and how you put that in the, in the hands of operators to be able to actually optimize what they do. Um, so that's really what we've done. So just a, a couple of conclusions. Um, first off, they can provide an enormous amount of data, but you need a, a simple way to leverage it. Um, getting more and more automatic, free, if you like, metadata about your content is one thing, but if, if there's no way to leverage it and actually use it to optimize what you're trying to do, um, then it's kind of pointless. Um, the, the second part of that is you don't know what data you're going to want in the future. So we actually gather all the data and then simply filter what's applicable for a particular task so that the operator isn't overwhelmed with a million different things. Um, you know, this, it's, it's pretty lightweight stuff. It's, it's not going to cost you storage money to, to keep this stuff. Um, Discovery actually realized an 83% improvement on the time that it took to process content through this system. So rather than, you know, 45 minutes for a 45 minute clip, at best case, uh, they're, they're running through these things really quite quick. So it's now costing them 10% of what it used to cost to do the QC and the compliance process. Um, the other one is, is where should you use AI, right? And really the, the, the optimal place to use it right now, and it's, it's similar to automated QC, right? Automated QC tools, original goal was to remove humans from the process. In actual fact, you know, you can never really review, you can never really remove all humans from the process because there's always going to be some things that those tools don't catch. However, what you can do is you can use those tools to optimize and guide the operator as to where they should focus within the video. And AI is kind of exactly the same, right? You're not necessarily removing the people from the process, but you are really optimizing, okay, you need to look here, 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 and here. Um, the other thing is you, you really need a, a orchestration platform to tie all that stuff together, right? If you, if you think of a piece of content going through a factory, it's kind of like a snowball rolling down a hill. It's gathering more and more data as it goes through the process, and it's how do you leverage that data to actually optimize the process further, right? Once you've got a defined process, stopping and saying, right, I'm happy with this isn't enough. Um, everybody's under pressure to do more, you know, distribute to more platforms, uh, save more money, do it with less people. All those things are important. And that is it, unless there are any questions. <laughs>